to close off chapter six, um, we should mention the empirical rule. Um, so it turns out the normal distribution is so widely used that often statisticians, they want to get uh, a good idea of what's happening with their data um, with minimal or even no calculations. Um, now, maybe when they sit down to do their, uh, their hardcore statistics, uh, then they'll need to crunch some numbers. Uh, but when they're out in the field, um, or if they just need a good idea of what's happening for their purposes, um, they very, very, very often use what we call, or what they call, the empirical rule. So let me begin there. Statisticians frequently use the empirical rule to quickly analyze data. Uh, this is to use the estimated percentages below. So you see uh, a bell curve there in the first graph. Um, at the center, of course, is the mean. And as we move out from the mean, we're counting standard deviations. So, you know, to the right, we go plus one, plus two, plus three. To the left, you know, if we're counting to the left, we think we're subtracting standard deviations, minus one, minus two, minus three, like so. Uh, we mentioned at the very beginning of this chapter, uh, the big, big uh, feature of the normal distribution is that no matter what data you're looking at, no matter what the context, if you count the same number of standard deviations, you're always counting off the same percentage of the data. Uh, and that's just amazing that it could all fit like that. So um, that really shines here when we study the empirical rule. So what is this all about? So you notice that um, I've written some things above that bell curve, right? And the first thing you see above the middle is that there are, is 68%. 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. So when we say within one, it means we can move up one or we can move down one from the center. That captures 68% of the data. Always for every normal distribution, no matter what the context, no matter what the standard deviation is, no matter what the mean. Um, if it fits a normal distribution, then you know within one standard deviation of the middle, either high or low, that's going to capture 68% of the data. Okay, now uh, to kind of tie it to the Z table, um, when we're using the empirical rule here and these percentages, this is like a, a shortcut, a quick way to avoid using the Z table. The Z table is very precise, right? Those numbers in the Z table, very accurate. The empirical rule are estimates, just to do a quick analysis. It turns out it's not exactly 68%, that's within one standard deviation, but it's very, very close. And I forget what exactly it is. I think it's a little bit below 68%. It's like 67 point something. And so everybody says, okay, well, you know, if we just want to do some, some quick number crunching just to get an idea or to avoid number crunching, really, we just want to get a quick idea of, of what's happening, then we'll, we'll all just recognize We'll just go with 68% just to kind of give it a nice, a nice round number. Okay. Turns out if you go two standard deviations, either be above or below the center, that's 95% of the data. So all of the data within two standard deviations, plus two or minus two, you captured 95% of the data. So if you know what the mean is and you know the standard deviation, then you know that 95% of the data is you know, within two of those standard deviations from the mean. It's not exactly 95%, but it's very close to it. Again, I forget if it's a little bit more, a little bit less than 95%, but you know, people just agree, okay, well, let's just remember 95%, and that will give us a really good idea of what's happening. And you notice 95%, that is a lot. <laughs> um, that's... Uh, <laughs> There's not much outside of two standard deviations, either high or low. But we do one more. What if you count all the way to three standard deviations, either above or below the mean? Turns out that's 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations. Now here we use a decimal because we, don't, we can't round it up to 100. 
um, because clearly there is data even further out than plus three standard, devi standard deviations and even further below minus three standard deviations. There is a little bit out there. So we can't round that to 100%. Uh, so people remember it as 99.7. Um, so those are the numbers that, that people know. 68%, 95%, 99.7%. And then there's a tiny bit, a tiny percentage even beyond uh, plus three and minus three. Now, if you scroll down a bit um, and you see uh, the next graph there below, you might be thinking, okay, um, so I get that there's 68% within one, 95% within two, 99.7% within three, but what would that mean for each little section? Right? It, it feels like we're dividing up this bell curve into each of these little segments, um, and you could count eight of them total. And so based on the empirical rule, um, you can see there those percentages. That is how much would fall into each of the little segments. And the easiest one to recognize are the ones in the middle. Hey, if there's 68% within one standard deviation, then that would mean there's 34% between the mean and plus one, and there's 34% between the mean and negative one. If you then say, okay, well, within two standard deviations, there's 95%. You know, you could figure out that, okay, that means there's 13.5% between plus one and plus two, and there's 13.5% between negative one and negative two. And then you see the other values there, you know, if, if we uh, kept using our estimates for the empirical rule, we could figure out that between plus two and plus three, there's 2.35%, and between negative two and negative three, 2.35%, all right, it's all symmetrical, obviously. If you go beyond three standard deviations, it's 0.15% on the high end and 0.15% on the low end. A very small percentage of data goes beyond three standard deviations either direction. Okay, now that we've explained the empirical rule, let's get to our last practice problem, number 10. It says the heights of players in the NBA, uh, which if you're not familiar with that, that's the Nas National Basketball Association, professional basketball. Uh, the heights, they follow a normal distribution with a mean of 201 centimeters and a standard deviation of 6.2 centimeters. Um, heights of people, any group of people, um, if you get enough, I mean, that's, that's gonna follow a, a normal distribution. There's gonna be like an average height and then the higher you get, the fewer and fewer people are going to be taller and taller and the fewer and fewer people are going to be shorter and shorter. Uh, so we're looking at NBA players here, of course. Um, and if you're curious, 201 centimeters is about six foot seven. So yeah, six foot seven is the average. <laughs> so you're watching on TV and you, you see, who's that little guy running around? Oh, wait a second, he's six foot three, you know, and he looks like this little guy. All right, anyway, um, and the standard deviation is 6.2 centimeters, uh, 6.2 centimeters, that'd be about three inches or so, if you're wondering. All right, anyway, let's get to part A. Estimate the percentage of players between 188.6 centimeters and 213.4 centimeters. Okay, so we're gonna use the empirical rule here, um, and we're gonna get uh, we're gonna be able to find the percentage of players between those two heights. Notice that the question says estimate. Why would the question say estimate the percentage? Well, because when we use the empirical rule, these are estimates, and we recognize that, but they're very close and they're very very practical. Okay, how are we even gonna go about this? Let's see. First off, so we'll go to the screen now. Finally, let's note the mean and the standard deviation. And what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna create something that looks a little bit like what we see in those graphs for the empirical. So just a number line, we don't really need a bell curve. Um, I'm just gonna make a line like this. 
I'm going to put the mean right at the center, and we recognize that's 201. And then I'm going to think, okay, this is plus one standard deviations, plus two, plus three, minus one standard deviations, minus two, minus three. And what we're going to do from here, we're going to fill in the numbers that we see. And you can see I, I had something there a moment ago and I erased them for purposes of this video. So how does this work? All right, well, if 201 is at the middle, and our standard deviation is 6.2, and we say, okay, now add one standard deviation. Well, we're gonna take 201 and we're gonna add 6.2. So what's that gonna be? 207.2. We add one standard deviation. And we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna add another standard deviation. I'm gonna grab my calculator at this point. 207.2 plus 6.2. That gives 213.4. So 213.4 would be plus two standard deviations. And we're gonna do it one more time for plus three, 219.6. And then we're gonna count down subtracting standard deviations. Okay, so 201 minus 6.2 would be 194.8. We can subtract again, minus another 6.2 will give us this one, 188.6. And let's subtract one more time for minus three standard deviations, 182.4. So these would be uh, the heights that would tell you how many standard deviations you are away from that mean of 201. Okay, with this, um, we'll be able to answer this question, part A, pretty fast. Um, estimate the percentage of players between 188 and 213. Well, there's 188, and there's 213. So what is that? That's plus two standard deviations and minus two standard deviations. Hey, what percentage of players would fall between plus two and minus two. And you know, if you look back at that first graph above, well, what percentage falls within two standard deviations from the mean? Right, How, from here to here, minus two plus two. Okay, I'm, I'm repeating myself too much. It's 95%. 95% 95 of players in the NBA are somewhere between 188.6 and 213.4. Okay, and you see I've got my note here. Uh, statisticians, they use this so much, it's memorized. So I would, rec I would recommend you guys memorize 68, 95, 99.7. 68 would be between these two, 95% between here, 99.7% between plus three and minus three. 68, 95, 99.7. Let's get to part B. I'm gonna keep, let's keep that right there. Part B says, estimate the percentage of players between 207.2 and 219.6. Well, I see those on the chart as well. 207.2 and 219.6, there's 207.2 and there's 219.6. Now you notice part B, the two values they give us, that's not symmetrical about the mean. Like part A was great, minus two, plus two. Okay, that's 95%. But when they give you something like this, well, that's when you use that second graph right there. Um, and okay, I'm, I've got a lot of drawing here going on. But yeah, so we know kind of go back here. So we know um, we're covering, you know, if you compare my drawing, so that's at plus one, that's at plus three. So plus one, plus two, and plus three. So we want to know the percentage that takes up from plus one to plus three. Well, here's where we use the second graph and we just do it like part by part. So we can tell between plus one and plus two, there's 13.5. 
between plus two and plus three, there's 2.35. And so, well, we just need to add those together to get the total there between 13.5 plus 2.35 would be 15.85%. And that answers part B. Okay, that is uh, the end of chapter six. Um, also, just by the way, just so there's no confusion, you know, when you're doing homework, uh, when you're taking an exam, if the problem wants you to use the empirical rule, then that's going to be said specifically. Like, it didn't say it in this practice problem because we're obviously we're doing it together, so that's okay. But in the homework or on a test, it will say use the empirical rule to estimate the percentage, blah, blah, blah. Um, if it doesn't say that, then we know we want to use the Z table because that's going to get uh, the probabilities or the percentages much more precisely than the empirical rule will. Okay, that's all for chapter six. Um, go check out the homework.